Hey there, Dango Stu here. Uh, today's video is on what to do when you get water in the oil of the hydraulics of a trim tilt. Um, so I kind of have to apologize because this video I sort of picked up halfway through this job. Um, the, uh, the workshop was a bit busy to sort of film when I started, but once everyone went, I um, got around to just sort of filming the last part where I finish up the cleaning uh, and then reseal the casing. So a, um, a big part of this job is getting rid of the old emulsified oil. Um, in this case, I ran a bit of clean um, uh, transmission fluid through it um, and used a bit of brake cleaner to clean it up. Um, I've also had it recommended to me uh, by one of the Honda guys that you can um, even just run a bit of diesel through it as a way of just getting it, getting the old emulsified oil out. Um, but so when I first opened this, it was full of very, very gunky oil. So it started like that. I basically tipped it all out to start with, um, flushed it with a bit of brake cleaner, and then started running oil through to clean it up. Um, but that's kind of only part of the picture. If water's got in once, it'll get in again. So cleaning it up and putting more oil in um, is likely to only lead to the same problem happening. So what I do next is just look at the three places that water can get into a hydraulic system like that and replacing the seals and the o-rings etc um, in those places so we'll get to it um, as i said apologize i apologize for it not being um, as complete as i would like to have been but hopefully if you are having this problem it'll give you some ideas about how to clean it up and how to make sure it doesn't happen so just to give you a quick heads up on how this trim tilt got removed um, i backed off the nuts on the steering of the pivot tube here um, which allowed me to separate these far enough to pull these pins out from here and up here, the top connects to here. Once the base was free, I could simply rotate the whole mechanism until it came out from here. So that's all that was really involved in removing the whole trim tilt mechanism. Oh, and obviously the wires that head up towards the uh, relay. So this screw here is the um, bypass screw. And it's got a little circlip in here. Um, I actually don't have any circlip pliers small enough to get into these little holes. So I'm just going to try and fish this out with the pick, oh, almost. All right, this might take two hands. So I'm going to fish this little circle clip out here, and then we can wind this screw out. There we go. A little bit easy with pliers, but possible without. Right. Just move you. Then once that clips out, we can wind this bypass screw all the way out. You can see all the emulsified oil still on this. A little bit of new oil I put in. But this O-ring on the end here, I'm going to replace because that's definitely one of the ways that um, water can get into the oil on these trim tilts. So the second way oil, water can get into the oil is just through this fill plug. This one's a little bit perished from, uh, from sun etc so I'm just going to replace this with a brand new one and uh, put a new o-ring in here as well. We can see now this is open we're starting to get a bit of the new oil and some of the older model spied oil coming out of here as well. So the third and most likely way water can get in is this oil seal around this uh, the actual main shaft that tilts the motor up. So this has a new oil seal here that's going to go in the top. We're just going to take this housing off by these allen keys here and then we can press a new uh, seal into this black housing and then we're good to go. Once this final screws out, I can just rock this a little bit. Just do it. There we go we can take this off. And you can see under here there's an o-ring around here as well so you want that o-ring to be in good condition but more importantly we're going after this oil seal in the end here right now to replace that. And you can see here this has actually had new red hydraulic fluid put in it but it's already sort of got that creaminess as it's mixed with the old emulsified oil. The seal on the top here is retained by this sort of grey ring. Uh, I've just used a oil seal puller to sort of pull the whole thing out. Um, now this is the seal we're replacing. So here's the new one. 
which drops down with this lip or the, the cupped side facing down and then this retaining ring just goes on top so I'm just gonna show you in here this is where it goes so I'm just gonna clean all this up a little bit you can see here there's a little bit of residue that um, grey retaining ring actually doesn't screw in or anything it's actually just put in with a bit of adhesive so I'll go see what we've got to re-secure that afterwards but I'll clean up this first and then we'll put that uh, put that oil seal in clean this I'm just using a little bit of brake cleaner so that's all cleaned up now this oil seal fits in here it's a reasonably tight fit sorry that was a bit of a two-handed job then so I've just used it to feed all the all the um, edges round once the edges are down you can just push it down it'll sort of square up but it's quite a tight fit in there the new oil seal should stay pretty well it's quite a tight fit um, oil seals you put like on the end of a uh, bearing carrier for example don't have anything holding them in this did however have a bit of a plastic lid here that was uh, put in with some sort of adhesive so I'm just going to grab this I don't want to put a lot on but I'm just going to put a few tiny drops of super glue around the outside just to hold that in again um, so I'll let that set um, if any Honda guys know what's normally used let me know um, this is a plastic housing this is a plastic ring it's not threaded or anything like that so there's no other way to hold it in um, I uh, just making sure I didn't get any on the uh, o-ring itself then quite sure what that was anyway sorry sidetracked um, so obviously whatever you use make sure you don't use very much because you may need to pull this out again for one um, and two you don't want it getting all over the uh, inner surface of this uh, oil seal so I'll start by putting this reservoir container back on I'm just gonna push down holding onto that bit of plastic holding the oil seal in just to make sure that it didn't pop off then and then uh, just got these four these four uh, fasteners with the allen keys on them now although this is a particular this is a Honda 30 um, a lot of these principles will apply to just about any outboard you uh, come across this is the old plug um, I'm now going to put the new plug which got a brand new o-ring in it so we'll pop that one in so hopefully that's point uh, sealed up nicely now and then we've got our uh, uh, drain screw mechanism with uh, new o-rings here and here and then we'll just wind this in and once we've got that in far enough we've got the fun of trying to get our circlet back in without pliers so wish me luck so these are um, the type of pliers I was hoping to use but even these pins which are quite small aren't fine enough to go in this particular um, particular circlet but I'll just use them to try and spread it out a little bit make sure it uh, stays locked in before I uh, put this back together and top it up and everything um, I just thought I'd show you uh, quickly inside here so the electric pump sits on top of here this is the little uh, sort of keyway I was talking about so make sure you don't lose that if it comes out um, if it doesn't come out with the motor and it stays in here and this is all full of oil then you tip that oil out it is very easy to lose that um, so this section here the round section is actually the pump uh, so it simply gets driven forward and backwards and these three fasteners hold that pump to the base plate inside this reservoir uh, and then there's inlets in and out on the bottom side of it that send the fluid in both directions so that's what you've got in there uh, I'm going to put this key back in uh, now I'll just top this up with some fluid okay so it's all topped up with oil now um, I've got this little keyway sitting in here uh, and I've because I can turn this easily by hand uh, I've got it orientated crossways like this and I'll make sure I've got the uh, 
drive shaft and the electric motor in the same orientation. So when I pop that back on top, uh, it'll slot into here nicely rather than sort of catching on it. Another thing to be aware of is this motor can go in multiple orientations. So just have a look which way yours came off. In this case, the um, the wires went to the to the back of the boat. The transfer boats here. So O-ring goes around the uh, outside of the motor here to seal against the housing. If it doesn't drop down, uh, this actually doesn't drop all the way down, I must admit, because um, it's quite a tight fit. But if it doesn't feel like it's going at all, it's because the orientation of the drive and that spindle aren't, uh, aren't the same. On the Honda, uh, there's two female speed connectors and the plug heading up to the relay. Uh, so what I've done is I've just made up a little, little sort of patch lead with just two male uh, spade connectors on it and just some bare wires at the other end. So I'll plug these into here and then I'll use this uh, jump starter to power it. So plugged in there, a little bit dodgy but those uh, wires at least aren't touching the short. And then this jump starter has alligator clip. Uh, this particular motor, so these motors go uh, up and down by uh, just reversing the polarity. So in this case, uh, red to red is down and white to red is up. So I'll just test both directions and we'll see how we go. So I've got to press record before, so it's been going up and down a few times. It seems fine. Uh, but what I have been doing, just to sort of go through again quickly, is uh, leaving this filler cap cracked slightly. So as it goes up and down, there's a chance for the air to escape so it can bleed. Um, when it gets to the top of its travel, this is when uh, the bulk of the oil is inside the piston that drives the, the motor up. And at that stage, the reservoir is at its lowest. So I just cracked the, uh, or actually took the whole uh, fill plug out and just put a bit more oil in to top it up while it was, while it was at its highest point. So when it's at its highest point, the oil level should be to the bottom of the fill, fill plug. So it's all pretty much ready to go back on the boat now. Um, now uh, we've got the new cap, um, the new uh, oil seal around the shaft here, and we've also got a new O-ring on the bypass, um, little bypass screw here. So hopefully, as well as having new oil, it won't get water in it anymore. Well, thanks for watching. Um, sorry this video is a bit disorganized. Uh, by far the least organized one so far, and that's saying something for me. Um, I hope though it did show you a bit about um, you know, the ways water can get in, uh, just giving a bit of confidence about cleaning it out. Um, if you don't really disassemble uh, the hydraulic pump itself, there's not a lot you can get wrong, you know. Um, it's all pretty obvious how it goes back together. Um, if you don't lift the pump, um, that sort of, uh, what do you call it, like a chip shape, like a casino chip shape section that was in the bottom, uh, there's nothing that's gonna come springing out and shoot across the, you know, the table and, and make it hard to put back together. Uh, putting clean fluid in, um, uh, running it, using the motor, running it up and down, um, and then draining it, putting new clean, uh, is a good way to, to flush it out. Um, but I'd definitely start by just tipping the old out first. As I said, make sure you don't lose that little adapter key that goes on the end of the, um, the electric motor. So one day I want to um, do a more uh, structured video on hydraulic trim tilt. People seem to have a lot of trouble with them, and they are, can, can be problematic. Um, they do uh, go wrong, because they're, they're actually relatively complicated for something that does just one thing. There's the whole electrical motor side, the relay, the switches, the hydraulics, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I guess one thing I didn't really cover is, is how you know when you've got oil in the, um, in the trim tool. And this really comes down a bit down to periodic maintenance. If you, as a part of the servicing process, uh, top up the level, uh, until it overflows, which is how you check when it's full. So you trim the motor all the way up, 
uh, take that little red cap we saw off and put some more fluid in. Check which fluid your particular one takes. Um, there usually is some recommended hydraulic fluid. Um, it's not always just ATF like I put in this one. Um, but when you do, when it starts to overflow, um, you'll see the condition of the oil that's coming out. It'll have mixed with what's in there and come out. So that's really your indication that there's a, a problem with the oil. You'll uh, visually see there's a problem with the oil long before you'll start to actually notice any symptoms um, of whether it's malfunctioning. By the time you do, it's probably actually gone too far. So just another argument for periodic maintenance. Topping it up is great. Uh, if it's leaking a little bit, you know, if it takes a lot of oil, you know it's leaking. Um, and if it's got water in, you'll see the the colour of the oil that flows out from the fill port. So that's how you know about that. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.